Hi, I'm Rachel and this is my Author's Answer video. The Author's Answer series was started by J.D. Archer and his writing group and I make about one of these videos per month, uh, sequentially, and uh, I'll link to my playlist and his playlist down below. I am also tacking onto this video the author tube in the trenches tag, which was a tag created by Adrian at Stripped Cover Lit, and I was tagged by Steve Donahue. So uh, I best get to it. So I'm up to question number 25 uh, in author's answer, which is, do you want to be a one-hit wonder or a prolific author? And I definitely would rather be prolific than a one-hit wonder, because I want writing to be a major part of my life. Uh, and not all of it I expect to be published for money either, just to uh, look at the blog posts I put out per month as it is. I am certainly hoping to traditionally publish a book or two, maybe more. And I also uh, intend to keep uh, writing and submitting uh, short stories to literary journals. Because uh, I want to make a name for myself uh, more diversely in uh, the literary world. I guess that's my way of being prolific. Uh, I also don't believe I would be any sort of one-hit wonder in the uh, New York Times bestseller sort of way. Because no one, uh, almost no one hits that goal. Uh, my goals are smaller, but uh, I think uh, putting them all in together uh, makes them more both achievable and also more meaningful than uh, just doing one thing. And at the end of the day, my focus, I really hope, will may continue to be the writing and not some quest for the Holy Grail. <laughs> okay, and now on to the author tube in the trenches tag. Uh, question number one is, uh, do you have a sweetheart novel or short story or poetry project that uh, turned you into a serious writer? Two things uh, pop out to me in terms of uh, sort of uh, giving me a mental, emotional, motivational push. <laughs> the first was my first novel that I ever wrote uh, when I was 11 years old and a whopping 82 handwritten pages. It's a uh, medieval fantasy quest novel called Captured by Fate uh, about a young peasant boy named uh, Colin Bugle who fights a dragon Agnosta and uh, wins the hand of fair Princess Heather, uh, also saving her from her nefarious uh, fiancé, Bill. Not William, Bill. <laughs> And uh, the second thing that pops to mind is when I was uh, in college, uh, one of the reasons I chose my college, Washington College in Chestertown, Maryland, was because it offered um, a creative writing minor and the chance to write a novel thesis for graduation. And so that's what I gravitated towards. And at the time, I was really starting to uh, try to reconnect with uh, my Jewish history and heritage and uh, I wrote a uh, novel called Gertie's Legacy, which uh, tracked uh, three or four women from a family and their Jewish journeys throughout the 20th and uh, early 21st centuries. And uh, it's not as good, I think, as uh, what I would hope to write uh, in this day and age, but then again, I guess I'm hoping that I'll always keep improving as a writer. But I certainly uh, poured my all into it in my senior year. Number two is, do you ever plan to work on a series length project? And my first response to this is, not really, I didn't uh, have any plans for that. But then, well, currently I'm plotting a fantasy novel. novel. I'm used to writing short stuff, that's also why I figured I'd never do a series. But I was uh, plotting all this stuff, and then I was listening to the Game of Thrones soundtrack, as you do. <laughs> and uh, uh, the music... Uh, that played during the end of whatever season it was when uh, Daenerys and her cohort uh, sailed back to Westeros at the end of that season. It, I was listening to that song and I got this striking image of uh, my main character in a situation that certainly doesn't happen in the plot of the first book. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, am I thinking of a sequel? <laughs> but I'm not far enough yet, along yet in the first book to really make any sort of uh, claims to, to that yet. <laughs> Question three is thought on mixed form projects like short stories that contain poems and novels that contain short stories and etc. And I'm thinking, well, it could work. Uh, I was actually uh, reading uh, some of F Fitzgerald, F. Scott Fitzgerald's uh, other novels, the not Great Gatsby novels uh, a couple months ago. 
And he inserted uh, some playwriting aspects into uh, his first book in particular, and I really think that picked up the pace, <laughs> that it was uh, more sprightly and interesting than the narrative. So I guess I'm okay with it, so long as it uh, doesn't break the flow of the story, although I don't tend to read a whole bunch of that sort of stuff. Question number four is where do I picture publishing it to be in 10 years? Uh, and uh, I've been actually attending a fair bit of uh, one-off sessions on publishing lately because uh, I'm hoping to start submitting my literary novella sooner or later, very sooner hopefully. Uh, so I think that uh, we're going to see more self-publishing uh, out in the broader world, also more hybrid publishing uh, where, you know, organizations are cropping up that help you basically with self-publishing. You pay them and uh, freelancers money to get the book ready and it's all sort of consolidated that way rather than finding all the people on your own. Or hybrid could also mean you pay for some of it but not all of it. And also uh, maybe more small press publishing, I hope, of, of uh, traditional uh, small press independent publishing, which is actually traditional publishing, I believe, in, in the parlance of the times. And it's just on a smaller scale, but they still, you know, accept you and pay for everything in the traditional way. But few of these books, I think, will ever have uh, the clout of one published by the Big Five, particularly Penguin Random House, which is really the king of the hill <laughs> in terms of output. Because, uh, readers uh, don't really care about where any book comes from and they're going to naturally gravitate towards uh, what's most put in front of them and what's most put in front of them is going to be what's marketed the most heavily and that's going to be the stuff from the big five because they have the access to the finances. That being said, the writing world certainly has many more layers in terms of publishing than uh, what you see at the very top. And not everybody, maybe not even most people, are going to get published by the Big Five or other uh, mid-level sort of publishers. And for people who are serious about it, other than, you know, getting to the very top, they're going to start joining writers' organizations and learning about more of these publishing opportunities. And people will also be uh, propping each other up in that arena. It'll be a much smaller community than the one that the Big Five can... Uh, give us by all of that broadcasting, but I think it might be the majority community, like the small underdogs in its way. And I certainly hope it'll be meaningful on that level uh, to the writers and readers who are interested in uh, perhaps more experimental stuff that the Big Five won't uh, be touching, stuff like that. I do think self-publishing and these other smaller publishing stuff will continue to be more viable. Uh, more people are putting considerable work into those projects rather than just saying, well, I wrote something, I don't care about editing it, so I'm just going to self-publish. That's uh, not as prominent anymore. There's actually legitimate self-publishing and uh, hybrid publishing going on. So yeah, I see it as a mixed bag of fish, and some of the smaller publishing might even start to make waves in the broader world. Like uh, there was a Goodreads uh, blog post I can link to below where uh, somebody pointed out uh, like 25 titles by small presses that they're interested in. Question five is if you could have one booktuber review your work, who would it be? And I feel like I should pivot to the fact, and humble brag, but uh, uh, a little over a year ago I had my second short story accepted for publication and there was a launch party at Politics and Prose which uh, was the bookstore that published the anthology I was published in uh, and two booktubers came down in part to see each other and in part to see me and to support me at this launch event and they came home and both of them reviewed my short story which still, you know, moves me deeper than I could express. It wasn't something I was expecting at all, and uh, to hear people who regularly take the time to review uh, more, you know, traditionally published books and so forth, uh, to, to take the time to talk about my story was just uh, such, such a gift and such an honor. I'm just so grateful to Peg from Peg the Book Prize Addict and uh, Bill from Earnestly Esten. I'm just... Uh, so, so grateful, and I'm always ha I'm looking and happy to repay the favor, like I was so happy to review Jen Campbell's work uh, on my channel and on Goodreads, and 
I'll keep an eye out certainly for more booktuber stuff <laughs> and, and let me know especially uh, if anybody out there is uh, getting published uh, short story wise. <laughs> Question six is writer quarrels are the things of legend. What author alive today would you want to spat? <laughs> and I don't think I uh, have the chutzpah to go ahead and uh, challenge people so publicly. Though, if I had it in me, I might have some uh, choice criticisms for Jonathan Safran Foer and his book, bloated piece of uh, book, <laughs> Here I Am. More in the reader sphere, I have uh, frustrations about uh, the argument revolving around uh, diversity in publishing and sensitivity readers, and I feel like both sides of the argument are way too dogmatic and miss the nuances. <laughs> Basically, people are wrong on the internet. <laughs> but more in terms of authors, I think the thing that really gets my goat uh, are the genre wars, which actually I've seen more in uh, adaptations than the books themselves. Like, I remember, you know, several years running, especially after, like, the Emmys or the Golden Globes or whatever, with uh, Game of Thrones, uh, George R. R. Martin would uh, start to humble brag about how, you know, critics never really took fantasy all that seriously before, but I'm just so touched and honored, look how well Game of Thrones is doing. And then on the flip side, we have uh, people who produce uh, adaptations of literary fiction, like with Olive Kitteridge a few years ago this happened, where the producers uh, said after some sort of award ceremony, well, we don't have all the pomp and the flash and of, you know, the big genre stuff like Game of Thrones, but we're just so honored that, you know, somebody took the time to think of our insular little drama and what we were trying to do here. And I just want to take all of these people by the throat and say, okay, fine, I'll play a tiny little violin for all of you. You all win the Oppression Awards. Now please, get back to storytelling. <laughs> Question number seven is, have you ever been part of a writer's group? And I have, and in fact, I am currently part of the Capitol Hill Writers Group, uh, which was extremely helpful to me in uh, drafting and polishing my literary novella. I'm hoping to stay with them for a long while. And there is so much good that comes out of writing groups because you build your connections, you get a help on your projects, but also critiquing other people's projects helps you to become a better writer. It's really true. I think that's the best sort of uh, writing class you can ever really get is to hands-on critique somebody else. So I'd say put in the effort absolutely with this. It's worth it. And question number eight is, uh, do you have a favorite writer's craft book? And I, I really don't. I, I don't tend to remember those all that well. Like in my creative writing minor, I believe I read some uh, John Gardner, but I don't really remember much of it. But again, I think the most meaningful uh, advice I get is through participation in critique groups uh, and also just uh, reinforcing lessons and reinforcing involvement in the writing community by going to conferences and classes and that sort of thing. And of course, I, the writing itself, you know, I, I, I believe in what Steve says about how continuing to read and to write on your own is a great way to enhance your own craft. That being said, um, I recently, last weekend, went to uh, the DC Public Library's Author Fest, uh, which one of uh, the panelists, a writer, she mentioned a craft book that could be interesting, although it's no longer in print. Uh, it's called Shakespeare's Game, How to Craft a Story Based on Causality. But so far, I did a Google search. I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, also, just recently, uh, Right Minded, which is a podcast put out by uh, NaNoWriMo and She Writes Press, did a whole episode uh, dedicated to craft books. So I'll link that down below, too. So uh, connected to that is uh, number nine, do you have a least favorite craft book? And I guess I would say no, because <laughs> I don't really remember them that well. <laughs> Finally, question number 10 is to tag people, and I feel like it's only fair since I co-opted my author's answer uh, video to uh, tag J.D. Archer, uh, because I'm just so grateful that he's uh, given me this outlet to think creatively about uh, my own writing on a regular basis, so hopefully this tag will uh, help uh, th make him think in a new way about his writing. I'd be curious to hear his answers. So that about covers it for me now. Uh, also, I'll, I'll put probably other various links down below, but particularly I would want to point out that 
I wrote a uh, blog post on my reading and writing blog about uh, the two most recent author uh, conferences that I attended recently and the strengths of each of them. So I will link that down below uh, if you are interested in uh, pursuing uh, author conferences. Some of them are even free, like the DC Library one, and uh, the ones that cost money, at least the most recent I went to, was certainly worth its weight. <laughs> So yeah, thanks so much for tagging me, Steve. Thanks so much for creating the tag, Adrian. Uh, keep writing, everyone. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.